Welcome to the Tips for Homeschool Science Show, where we're breaking down the lofty ideals of teaching science into building blocks you can use in your homeschool. I'm Paige Hudson, and for Season 5 of this podcast, we're answering your questions about teaching science at home. Let's dig into this week's question. Can you teach science without experiments? Well, no and yes. Clear as muddy water? Well, let's dig into this week's question and filter through the options to clear up the waters. So first of all, no, it is not possible to teach science without experiments. My immediate answer to this common question, can you teach science without experiments, is usually no. Because this question comes from a fear of doing experiments that won't work or ones that are too cumbersome and require too much. And it comes from a hope that handing your kids a textbook or an encyclopedia can be enough for science. And the answer to that question is no, it's not possible. A good plan for science requires that we do some hands-on science activities. Remember a few weeks ago when we talked about what a week with science should look like? You're doing science, you're gathering information, and you're telling people. So you really need to be doing some kind of hands-on science activities. As we've already discussed, science is both a content and a context subject. In other words, you need to be learning the principles and facts about science, but you also need to do and see science in action. The good news is that those hands-on experiments don't have to be difficult or cumbersome, especially during the early years. Which brings us to, yes, it is possible to teach science without experiments. So right after I answer no, I'll explain that it is possible to teach science without the traditional idea of experiments. Hands-on science includes so much more than mixing chemicals in a lab. You can explore your crafty side by making clay or felt models. You can head outside and observe nature. You can learn about science as you collect flowers or rocks. You can play with science at your local science museum. You can see science in action at a bakery. You can learn about science by playing in the ocean or by swinging at the playground. Honestly, the possibilities are endless because science literally surrounds us each and every day. As you get more comfortable with hands-on science, you can add in simple experiments. Things like mixing baking soda and vinegar or trying to freeze salt water. Hands-on science doesn't have to be cumbersome or difficult. It just needs to give our kiddos an opportunity to see science in action. So in short, it's possible to teach science without doing experiments, but it's not possible to teach science without doing some kind of hands-on exploration. Believe me, I understand that not everyone enjoys science as much as I do, but we need to present the hands-on aspect of science in some way to our students. And I trust that by now you have a better idea of how you can do that in your homeschool. To see a full transcript of this podcast, along with a few helpful links, including one to my super practical book, The Homeschooler's Guide to Experiments, head on over to elementalscience.com slash blog slash podcast slash 77. That's elementalscience.com slash blogs with an S slash podcast slash this episode's number, which is 77. Next week, we're going to chat about narrations for science. Until then, I hope you have a great week playing with science. <laughs>